everyone. I'm Eva Tucker from iSelect Fund, and I'm excited to welcome you all to our discussion today. Agri-Food Conversations is brought to you by iSelect, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. Agri-Food Conversations is all about driving innovation in agriculture. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, including emerging topics such as soil health, plant genetics, vertical farming, and aquaculture, to name a few. This month's theme is Precision Agriculture, and on today's call, we are joined by Rob Rannick, CEO of Pattern Ag. Pattern Ag samples fields to map the location and abundance of the most damaging insects, nematodes, fungi, and bacteria. This helps farmers better understand the risks they fa they're facing from costly pathogens like corn rootworm and soybean cyst nematode, so they can optimize input selection and spend and also helps identify and promote microbes key to nutrient availability, resource acquisition, plant growth, disease suppression, and more. Each of you knows companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We have invited you to this call because you are some of the smartest, most talented people in Pattern Ag's market. You are potential customers for Pattern Ag's products and services. You have built a company similar to Pattern Ag's or you are a sophisticated business person or agriculture professional who understands the market and the challenges and opportunities Pattern Ag may face. Before we get started, we have a quick poll question to get a better idea of who we have on the call today. Please take a few seconds to answer. And then a few process comments while the poll's running. We are not soliciting investment, this presentation is to provide information to help Pattern Ag find customers, mentors, and other strategic relationships that can help them grow their business. You are all on mute. You can use the chat window to ask a question at any time. This presentation is being recorded and will be available for replay. So without further delay, I'm pleased to introduce to you Rob Pranick, CEO of Pattern Ag. Thanks, Eva, and really appreciate you and I select and the rest of the sponsors inviting us on today to talk about Pattern Ag. Really excited to give you uh, an overview of the company and how we see ourselves from both a mission perspective and a science perspective. And then after I do that, I'll dive in a little bit deeper on some of our product offerings and we'll talk about how we're helping farmers today with our, our service. So, you know, as, as Eva mentioned, you know, we're fundamentally focused on uh, improving the state of knowledge on soil science and doing it in a way that is practically useful for farmers today. And so we were founded a couple of years ago with a focus on using new genomic analysis to better understand what's going on in agricultural fields and to help growers make better decisions that will help drive their profitability based on that analysis. And so, you know, genomic surveillance is kind of a hot topic these days in part because of some of the learnings from COVID over the last year. There've been some, you know, recent articles in The Economist and The New York Times talking about new applications of genomic surveillance, you know, with more of a focus on, on human health here at Pattern, what we focus on is using those same kinds of tools around genomics, but applying them to plant health and really with focusing on, you know, what's actionable today with this kind of data. And so that's what I'm going to talk about at a high level the, to get a little bit of a sense of the company. We're a couple dozen people, about a third of our team is in the Midwest in the field, and then the rest is based out of Emeryville, California, and that's where a lot of our core genomics laboratory is as well. In terms of the, the folks in the company, our initial investor was the production board, which is run by Dave Friedberg. Dave is well-known in the ag tech community for founding the Climate Corporation, and since then, he's continued to invest in the, the food and ag space and uh, pattern is one of the companies that, that he's invested in with his fund. We've also got a bunch of other 
great investors. I won't, I won't name everyone, but that gives you a little bit of a sense of the background of the team. We have some folks from Climate. We also have some folks from a company called Radiant Genomics that were doing kind of similar types of technology in other domains uh, that was eventually acquired by Zymergen. So that gives you a little bit of a sense of the, the, the company itself. You know, the way that we view, you know, what we're doing from a scientific perspective is really about understanding the microbiome. So, you know, I think people here have a good sense of this, but, you know, there's lots of things out there that have microbiomes. The soil is, is one of the biggest and most complex microbiomes that's out there. To give you a sense of that, you know, when we pull a sample, you know, a, a core, that's roughly 100 billion organisms, you know, inside that core. It's about 5,000 unique species, give or take. Um, and about 20% of those species are essentially undiscovered. And so what we do as a company is we really work to understand this little microcosmos that's in every agricultural field and is really the core ecosystem that farmers are planting their crops into. And so fundamentally, we believe that ecosystem is driving outcomes. And what we do as, as a company is working on capturing the data around not just what that ecosystem look, look like, but how does it connect with the outcomes. And so for every soil sample that we pull, we turn that into about three gigabytes of data in our system. This is the core technology that we use to do that. This is a very high level of view, but it gives you a sense of you know, what our pipeline looks like. You know, first, what we face is really a logistics challenge to go get uh, field moist soil out of farmers fields and into a laboratory environment. Secondly, we have a soil lab that homogenizes about typically kind of a half kilo of field moist soil and turns it into a one milliliter liquid format that we can then push through our robotics heavy next generation sequencing lab. And after the DNA in that sample is sequenced, you know, it's just kind of a string of letters and we take all of that data and put it up to the cloud. And then we run a set of bioinformatics models on it. Everything from, you know, kind of very basic things like classification to more higher level models on how is this a set of organisms actually impacting agronomic outcomes. And then we integrate in the agronomic data from our customers and from third parties. So that's really how we go from soil to data as we think about it internally in terms of our core technology. And what we focused on are pretty nuts and bolts pieces of this, which is really high throughput, low cost. You know, fundamentally for our customers, we need to take in a lot of samples for them and we need to do it at very low cost for them to do it at scale. And so that's where we've put a lot of our investments into robotics and other components of our backend laboratory that's doing this analysis. And so that's the technology in terms of the vision that we have, you know, our view is that this type of microbial mapping and this more complete understanding of the ecosystem into which growers are actually planting their seeds is going to unlock this next level of understanding of systems biology. And so fundamentally what we're doing for our customers are we're building maps of their microbiomes and in the very long kind of time frame. Our goal is actually help them start engineering their microbiomes themselves. So actually impacting how their profitability and productivity results go from their field by actually engineering the microbiome itself. So that's a, that's a very long-term vision. There's a lot of work to get to the point that we can really apply engineering focused techniques to the systems biology of fields, but that's where we see uh, the industry going over the longer term. And that's what we're focused on helping to enable as a company. So that's kind of the, the very high level vision view. I wanna now talk a little bit more about, you know, what we're doing for our customers today. And so, you know, fundamentally what we focus on today is we help, we generate analytics for our customers with our service that help them protect their crops from pests and disease. And I'll talk a little bit more you know, about exactly how we do that and, and what our customers 
results look like from that. So, you know, what we're very have a very focused strategy, which is that we are 100% focused on Midwestern row crops, corn and soybeans. There's a lot of other crops out there that are interesting that we will get to, but the first focus for us have been corn and soybeans. And what we're fundamentally doing for our customers is we're helping them optimize the about a third of their spend that they're making on their agronomic inputs every year. And, you know, farmers, you know, know that these, this spend is really determinative. I mean, it really makes a difference making the right choices here. You have a good year, you make the wrong choices, you have a bad year and they are pretty different year over year. So you're changing, you know, your, your agronomic input mix every year. And so that's what we're focused on is, is on a yearly basis, helping our, our customers make the best choices they can from both a productivity and profitability perspective. And what our genomic surveillance technology really unlocks as at a fundamental level is we enable our customers to actually predict their crop risks in advance. And so it's that prediction with precision that is really the, the differentiator for this type of technology. And so, you know, here, this gives you a little bit of a sense of a screenshots from our platform. So you can kind of see what this is, what our customers see when they're looking at their data. And what we're doing is we're running a panel of pathogens and we're helping our customers actually predict, well, what's going to be impacting next season's crop. And what we typically do for our customers is we pull samples just post harvest, we run our analysis and then we let them see, okay, what, what am I seeing for next year and changing up their agronomic input decisions based on that. So that prediction component is really at the core of what we, what we do. And to give you a sense of, okay, well, what does that mean from a bottom line perspective for our customers? What we really help them to do fundamentally in terms of tuning those, those agronomic inputs are helping them understand where to spend, where they need it, where they're not spending today, and save money where they're actually overspending on inputs that they don't need today. So, you know, I'll give you a quick example of each here on this corn rootworm, which we'll talk a little bit more about later as a common area of overspend for our customers. Our genomic assay can actually detect, hey, am I going to have a corn rootworm issue next season and allow customers to, for example, trade down, which can be hugely cost saving from their perspective. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about how that works in a few minutes. On the SCN side, you know, it's kind of the, the flip side of that, which is what we found in our data working with our customers is that there's a lot more of kind of like low pressure SCN out there than farmers realize. In a lot of cases, they can be spending more on treating the SCN that they don't realize they have and increasing their overall profitability with our service that way. And so that's an example of actually spending more to actually treat areas that previously farmers are having yield loss on, but didn't realize that you know this, this was the cause. So those are the two core value propositions and, and what we help our, our customers do. You know, the, the, this gives you a little bit of a sense of some of the panels that we offer. So I talked a little bit about this pathogen panel I'll talk a little bit in a little bit more detail on that in a minute. We have a dedicated corn rootworm panel that I'll talk more about as well. And then this season we're introducing commercially uh, our bioactivity panel, which is focused on soil health. So it's kind of the flip side of the pathogens. It's what is the microbial content in your field that is actually beneficial and is helping your, your plants thrive and fundamentally that's, you know, that's really tied into to soil health and regenerative agriculture. We have a lot of customers who are interested in figuring out a baseline, you know, what they're doing in those areas. And this gives those customers that, that opportunity to actually see, well, how is what I am doing from a regenerative ag perspective um, actually making an impact in a quantitative way? So fundamentally, the way that our product works, our customers upload fields into our system for analysis, we generate a sampling plan based on their fields. We typically go out and sample ourselves. We have our own team uh, that does that. Then we run it through our backend uh, metagenomic system that we, we just talked about. And then we sit down with our customers and review, review the results together, oftentimes with 
one of their crop consultants as well. And, you know, for the pathogen panel, it's about three dozen, you know, specific pathogens and really is helping farmers understand at a subfield level, well, where do I have elevated pressure for all of these different types of pathogens? So it gives farmers really a rich understanding of, you know, where there is potential in their fields. And to give you a sense of some of the quantifi quantification and, and research behind this, this is a study that we conducted with Bex, one of our partners around some long-term tillage uh, practices. And there's lots of interesting, you know, items here to, to think about and take a look at. But for the sake of time, I'll just to take a simple look at this. And if you look and see, here we were testing for soybean cyst nematode and SES. And what we found is in the fields with the, that were not corn on corn, we found just as you would expect it, more SCN and SDS. And so that's what these little charts are showing the left. Uh, two uh, columns are showing, showing the corn on corn fields. And then the right two are shown where there was actually more rotation going on. So that gives you a, just a kind of a sanity check on some of our analysis here. We've got lots more analysis if people are interested in that. You know, to talk through some of the use cases that we have with our customers, you know, one good example of that is placement. You know, we had a customer that was really trying to break through his, his yield plateau with soybeans and really used uh, our analysis to figure out which fields had the highest kind of early se season seedling blight pressure and avoided those fields in, in planting. So that's a good example of how, how our products can be used from a placement perspective. Similarly, we have customers that uh, are really looking to validate that what they are doing is working at a quantitative level. So we had a customer that had uh, kind of a long history with white mold being an, an issue and uh, used some new cover crop practices against it and then used our analysis to actually confirm, okay, this particular cover crop that I'm using is actually having a quantitative impact on the white mold. And you can see here, this is a, this is a the field where that customer verified it. Another uh, good example here was looking at seed selection. This was specifically a, kind of a defensive selection around SDS and looking, okay, where is really my pressure quantitatively? and predictively for this for next season. So that gives you a sense of a lot of the different use cases. Uh, a big focus for us for this season is corn rootworm. And this is really led by what we've seen in our past couple seasons working with customers in terms of, you know, what are the critical, what are the critical pests that they're, they're focused on. And, you know, our observation with corn rootworm is that you have a huge amount of trait investment in it, 60% plus, but really only in the kind of 10% range of fields are at risk of, you know, economic damage from corn rootworm. And that, you know, that comes at a real cost. You know, your farmers are spending a lot of money to, to buy those traits. And so there's a lot, been a lot of interest in, you know, trading down or even conventional corn with our customers. But the you know, the challenges that farmers face today around predicting, well, am I going to have a corn rootworm incident next year are, are real with the current technology. So, you know, if you're really trying to figure this out with sticky traps, they're pretty loosely correlated to actual, you know, corn rootworm pressure for the next season. And they are also very hard to scale. You know, they take up a lot of resources um, and time to really do it right. And so you can kind of try to rely on some of the network data, but that's not a good indicator, you know, based on all the studies, the actual pressure on one of your fields, if you're, if you're a farmer. And so that's really what we bring in this theme of precision agriculture is the ability to, with precision, actually run this detailed genomic analysis and uh, determine, hey, based on what we've seen in your field, which is really more determined by egg pressure, that's what our that's where our genomic analysis is targeting in the fall. You know, what's the actual 
economic damage threshold that you're likely to see in the next season. And that's a hugely valuable product, you know, from, from a farmer perspective, because you can actually understand, okay, at a field by field level, you know, where am I seeing enough pressure that I actually don't want to trade down or don't want to go conventional next season. And so the assay that we've developed is detecting eggs that have been laid and that are in the soil uh, post-harvest. And it's actually the sensitivity level is down to a single egg. So we can detect one egg that comes into a sample with us. You don't have to put out sticky traps in season and we turn results back very quickly to growers. And so this really for us is an example of a very practical application of our technology for growers that really, you know, increases their profitability today. And so just to give you a little bit of a sense of what this product uh, looks like, you know, you, here you see a couple of, you know, relatively uh, low pressure fields. You can see here, we're distinguishing between Western and, and Northern corn rootworm, our genetics assay, because it is based on uh, the genome of each of these corn rootworm species that's sensitive enough to tell the difference between them. And, you know, here's a good example of a field that has a, quite a bit of pressure in it. And, you know, our, our team would certainly uh, recommend, you know, some sort of uh, trait package for this kind of, for this kind of situation. So that's the, the really high level overview of, you know, what we're doing at Pattern, you know, at a high level, you know, we're really focused on applying this genomic surveillance technology to, in the long term, really fully understand systems biology in fields in a, at a way that level that we just can't today without this technology. And as we build towards that longer term vision, we're focused on bringing really practical products to market and putting tools in the hands of growers today that can help them become more profitable next season. And as we build up our, our, our set of insights around the soil, there's a huge amount more you know, that we can do over time for our customers and happy to talk about you know, what, that, what that roadmap looks like a little bit once we get to folks' questions. We'd love to, of course, engage with anyone who is interested in this kind of analysis for their fields. I put up our contact information here. This is really the best way to get in touch with us to start a conversation about this. So really appreciate everyone's time and happy to answer questions. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for a great presentation. To the audience, if you want to ask a question, you can raise, hit the button to raise your hand and I will unmute you so you can ask your question aloud or you can type in a question into the Q&A box and I will read it aloud for you. So I'm happy to have any questions from the audience. But in the meantime, can you talk to us, Rob, more about your sales cycle and what's the biggest selling point that tips farmers in favor of purchasing the product? Yeah, so typically what, we, what we're doing right now is we're mostly selling for the fall of this year. And so typically when you sign up with us today, we'll come in and pull samples uh, post-harvest in your field later this fall. And so that's kind of roughly what our, what our sales team is focused on right now. And, you know, in terms of the, the selling point, for us, you know, the, there's lots of different reasons the customers are purchasing, you know, our product in terms of the types of pathogens or pests that they're concerned about in their fields. You know, that's obviously like quite unique um, to each, each farmer, but the, the bottom line commonality between all of the, the purchasing decisions that we see is that our customers have some question that they believe that we can help them answer to increase their profitability. On their on their farm, and so it really all comes back to the the ROI from a customer perspective, and you know corn rootworm is a great you know example of that. There's you know tens of dollars an acre in increased profit to be had around making the right choices, you know, around that, and so it's really that kind of bottom line practicality that 
we see our customers, you know, purchasing our product, our, our services on. On that train of thought, Craig Mansky asked, how do you determine the number of samples and where you take them on a given field? Yeah, good question. So we have a, a model for how we sample. So we have a very particular sampling protocol and we have a density of sampling as well in a given field that we follow as our model. And so our, our general density is a 10 acre sampling zones. And then we customize those zones based on the individual farmer's fields. So we're actually using agronomic inputs from our customers to customize and set up that zone structure. And then within those, and so they're not all exactly, you know, 10 acres, they vary a little bit based on that customization. And then within each zone, the way that we're, we're pulling samples, we're pulling actually about a dozen samples within that zone. And then we report data back, you know, we put through our, our pipeline on a, on a per zone basis. And so that's how we report data back to farmers. So it's subfield level, you know, data. It's a mix of whether our customers are making field level decisions with that data or subfield level decisions. We have customers that do both and mostly that just relates to their management practices and really how they tend to make decisions on their farm, whether they're doing field level or subfield. Great, thank you. Peter Hawthorne asks, what is the most important thing to help enable scaling and growing pattern ag? What is most important to enable scaling? Yeah, well, that's a great question. So they, you know, that's more of like a, a company level question. For us, you know, it's pretty, I would say uh, meat and potatoes, I guess is the right word. Like what, what we're focused on in, in a lot of ways is just scaling up our infrastructure. So what we're seeing in terms of growth is very large season over season growth. And, you know, that puts strains on our internal infrastructure in various ways. Everything from, you know, kind of how we run our sequencing process and what types of capital investments we're making in our sequencing technology, all the way to, you know, how we're pulling samples out in the field. So it's kind of that whole pipeline that I talked about, all the physical components of that, you know, is really where we put a lot of our, our you know, scaling energy. The cloud components, you know, thanks to modern cloud computing systems, those are fairly fungible. You know, you can go get more cloud uh, compute if you need to, but things like, you know, how do we run the, the soil lab? And, and how do we optimize that? You know, that's an area where, for example, we, we've made a big investment over this winter in our soil processing laboratory, just in terms of the, the equipment that we're making to, to increase our throughput, you know? And so to give you a sense of it, for the, the type of service that we run, there's no off-the-shelf equipment out there. You, you know, we have built our own electromechanical systems that do our soil processing. And so we've made a big investment of that early on. And that's an area where we continue to invest, not just in adding more of them, but continuing to refine, you know, that technology. So a lot of the scaling, you know, the, the, this is a very like back to basics kind of answer, but a lot of it is on just scaling up that physical side of our infrastructure. In terms of the commercial side, we've seen really great pull from customers on that. And so we are, we are expanding our, our sales team, you know, one exciting announcement that we, that we're making soon is that we brought on Mike Tweedy to lead our sales team formerly at Indigo. And so really excited to have him help scale up the sales team. But I spent a lot of my time thinking about like, okay, how do we optimize how we put soil, you know, through our, through our homogenization system. Thank you, great answer. So we have another question from Zach Pogue. How do you differ from biome makers and other soil genomics companies? Can you talk a little bit about the competitive landscape? Yeah, that's a good question. So there are definitely there are definitely some competitors out there in this space. I mean, you know, five or six years ago, there wasn't, there wasn't that much going on, but there's definitely, you know, more going on now. And my general view is I would expect to there to be more in the future, you know, our general view of this space is it's very clear to us that this is a, a service that's going to become ubiquitous. You know, we can see that from the way that we're interacting with our customers today that, you know, this, this type of service is needed 
and that this will become, you know, just part of the arsenal of farmers out there in the future. And so, you know, there's also on the, so that's kind of on the customer side, there's a lot of customer pull on the technology side, you know, because of what I talked about earlier with COVID, there's a huge amount of more interest in genomic surveillance and investment going into that space, you know, right now. So I would expect there more technology platforms to be stood up, you know, on this types of gen genomic surveillance in the future, just because of the, the technology push. So, you know, you have customer pull, you have technology push. And so I expect that, you know, that this is going to be a, a competitive space in the future. In terms of the, the direct question of how, how we differentiate, well, first of all, we focus on Midwestern row crops. So we have a very focused approach to what we're, what we're doing. There's lots of strategies. You can focus on specialty. You can kind of look kind of more broadly in terms of what you're doing. We're very focused on crop type. And the, the reason for that is, as you can see from our discussion, we are trying to bring a very focused product offering to our customers. So what we bring to our customers is not a new kind of like generic test. Like if you want to kind of see, you know, what's interest, what's in your soil, maybe you're interested in it, maybe you're not, here's kind of a generic kind of testing capability. We are very, very much focused on how, how do we make this a relevant product for our customers? And so that crop type focus gives us the ability to actually think very deeply about, okay, what is the right product if you are farming soybeans? What's the right product if you're growing corn? And so that focus, you know, from a product perspective, I would say is the second differentiator beyond the, the crop uh, focus. And then the last, you know, thing I would say is, you know, we have a very practically minded team that is just 100% focused on farmer profitability. So when we think about the product offering, you know, this is not about doing new, new and exciting science, although it is new and exciting science, it's about how do we take that product and help make our customers more profitable. So that very practical focus on grower profitability, I would say is kind of our third differentiator. But, you know, my expectation is that there's gonna be a lot of interest in this space, you know, in the next few years, and you're gonna see, you know, more and more folks, you know, coming into the space, not just in the areas that we're focused on, but in lots of places. Great, thank you. Peter Hawthorne has another question. He asks, how well are you able to measure overall soil composition, microbiome and health, including carbon? Do you see the opportunity in such a comprehensive measurement and tracking over time? If yes, how and when? Yeah, great question. And definitely a, a focus uh, of ours. I mean, carbon's a very hot topic uh, right now. I actually was on another panel a month ago or so that was just talking about carbon and you know how to use this type of genomic analysis to look at carbon. I'll, I'll start by just kind of broadening the question a little bit about like you know where, where, what's our roadmap look like in the future to give you a sense of our product vision. Although you know as you've seen, we're very focused on what are these these targeted practical use cases for our customers. Our broader vision is that at some point the core technology that's used in any in soil testing for any reason, whatever you're trying to figure out, whether it's nutrient profiles or carbon content, it's really going to be run by this type of genomic analysis. It's just, you know, on this topic of precision ag, it's just a more precise technology platform than what we've used in the past. And there's all sorts of exciting things that you can do with this technology in terms of precision um, and scope that you just can't do with other types of technology. So for sure, we see all sorts of other types of interesting, you know, measurements in soil being incorporated into what we, into what we do. On the carbon, you know, component specifically, the short answer is yes, you can, you can run our types of uh, tests and you can tell all sorts of uh, things about organic matter content of the soil and carbon content. And we'll be definitely be talking more about that in a, in a future at a more detailed level. You know, the way that what I would say is that the buckets that we think about it from a product perspective on is carbon is one bucket and soil health is another bucket. And I've talked a little bit about carbon on soil health. This is what our bioactivity beta is really about. It's about understanding and assessing soil health. So really looking at, 
you know, for example, your your ratios of the fungal components in your soil and whether or not you have the not just the markers, but the actual species that are contributing beneficial functions to your soil. We actually shied away from calling it soil health um, and called it bioactivity because soil health is kind of a loaded term. You know, it means a lot of things to a lot of people. And so we took a more kind of technical approach in terms of how we thought about that product. But that's, you know, that's how we think about soil health is in that bioactivity panel. And that's part of our panel this season. We did a beta of that last season and had great feedback from our customers. And so that's now part of our standard commercial offering, part of this decision dashboard. Steve Welker asks, how much do you charge and does it vary by crop, size of fields, location, et cetera? It doesn't vary by any of those things. It varies by the product that, that you're purchasing. And we only have two that you can purchase from us. One is what I just referred to is this decision dashboard. And that is, for, that is $6 an acre. And the other is the, the, this targeted corn rootworm only offering. And that's about half that. So, so that's roughly our charging. Great. Great. Thank you. So our last question that we always like to close with is what can the audience help you out with here and how can they find you? Are there any types of specific introductions that would be useful for you? How can we help you? Yeah, great question. I mean, we were blessed with a really wonderful investor group. And so we've got a lot of great, you know, connections across the industry from them. You know, the, the thing that we're most interested in is working directly uh, with farmers. And so we really encourage any farmers who are interested in giving us a try to follow the link here on the screen and get in touch with us. We would love to talk to you about our service and the, but we're always open to, you know, any conversations interested in talking, you know, technology with people as well. It's really a fascinating area. And from a systems biology perspective, you know, our feeling is, you know, we generate something that's really has value to farmers today, but we're just scratching the surface of what we can do in terms of understanding the systems biology. And we always love having those kind of, you know, bigger picture technical conversations with people as well. So I would say those are the two main things, but always open to have conversations with folks. Awesome. Thank you, Rob. And thank you for everyone joining us today. Congratulations, Rob, for your, all your progress to date. I'd like to thank the audience for your active participation and questions to let you all know. We host these calls every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central. A replay of this webinar will be emailed to you in the next 24 hours. And please feel free to share that with others. You can, and they can register or view past conversations at agrifoodconversations.com. So thank you everyone and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Eva. Great discussion, great questions. Appreciate it.